Let's move on to local board input, and we've got our Kaipariki local board chair, John Gillam, and then Waitakere Rangers local board chair, Greg Priestland. Oh, is John He's not, here. not here? Okay, well, why don't we hear from Greg, and if John arrives, then we'll hear from him. Welcome, Greg, Greg, Sandra, Steve, and Saffron, most of the Waitakere local board. Yes, and apologies from Neil, he was on the carpet here. That's all good. Right, open it to Greg. So, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we're here, obviously, to talk about curry dieback, and just as a reminder to all councillors that curry dieback is a scourge of the Waitaki Rangers. Uh, the recent monitoring report suggested that the inf uh, infection rate had doubled over the last five years and clearly we're facing a crisis and uh, there's no final clarity about causes or solutions but we believe that the precautionary principle is something that must apply in this situation. Um, our feedback is in the report at pages 103 and 104. <coughs> brief reference to it in the um, agenda item itself, but our submissions, we believe, cover more fully our position. And if I could just quickly go through those. Um, firstly, we believe that the forested area of the Waitaki Ranges needs to be closed, and only coastal beaches, coastal walks without kauri, and service roads should be left open in the meantime. And we believe that that's required to provide a very clear policy direction and an unambiguous message to the public from Council that the forest is closed. And once that happens, uh, Council then needs to take a pause, it needs to review the current situation, and it needs to create a comprehensive long-term plan for the future of the park to determine where public access can be provided and what needs to be done to protect Kauri. And we believe that the formulation of an overall plan needs to consider a range of factors beyond Kauri dieback and it needs to include visitor management and experience and the overall environmental protection of the ranges. We consider that all other tracks should remain closed until this planning work is completed and the tracks are determined to be safe. And specifically, um, this includes the Kitty Kitty Falls track, which is a track that has Kauri and has in the past been considered to be a high risk track. We are concerned that if a few tracks are kept open, they will be inundated, inundated with visitors with the associated risk that tracks will be degraded and ruined and this will make it harder to stop the spread of curry PTA. And there needs to be a clear, understandable process to determine which tracks can be opened and when. We consider that Takarawa Maki needs to be closely involved in the decision making and that the community should also be involved in this process and in terms of community engagement obviously that's a, a job that the local board would be happy to do. And finally, that uh, proper enforcement of the closure is tr critical. If I can just very quickly talk about the options that have been presented to you today, and we struggle to work out which one we should support. Uh, in terms of option B, we don't support that, although we do support the, that coastal tracks without Kauri should remain open in the meantime. And a classic example of that would be the Bethel's Tehinga walkway. In terms of option C, we note that it doesn't allow for the reopening of safe tracks, but we do have a great deal of sympathy for the um, protective measures that that option would engage with. And in terms of option A, which is the recommended option, um, we want to support it, but we can't. We believe that there are too many tracks being proposed to be kept or left open and Kitty Kitty Falls is the classic track amongst that list. We believe that the option is confusing <coughs> and it will have the same level of confusion which um, it will generate the same level of confusion which happened over summer and that's part of the difficulty that we're having to grapple with today. And can I just re-emphasize uh, one of the points in our submission and that is that we need to have a proper process to determine which tracks can be open and when, and to Karawamaki and ourselves, we believe should be part of that process. Um, 
those are my very quick comments and we're happy to answer questions. Okay, I'm sure there'll be a couple of questions and we've got um, the recommendations in here. So we'll take a question from Councillor Walker and Councillor Simpson. Sure. Um, do you have some suggested amendments to what we're considering? No, we don't. Um, uh, we only receive the agenda item in um, Thursday, Friday. We've only been able to get our heads around it this morning to an extent. Mm -hmm. it, it, it might be an option C or it might be an option A, but with a um, highly modified process to determine which tracks should be open and when. But uh, option A suggests that a whole lot of tracks remain open now where we think closure, then start the process might be the better way to deal with it. Okay, I guess my question, further question arising from that, Madam Chair, is what opportunity exists for the officers to consider uh, changes to the options suggested in the light of the various submissions that we've heard, particularly that from the Waitakere Rangers Local Board. Hmm. So that's, we've got the substantive mm. item. We'll hear the full presentation from our staff and we're going to take the, a good amount of time to do that. And remembering that you know the last five months have been absolutely focused on this, and you know the staff have certainly taken um, full cognizance of everything that's been raised by the local board and all of the members of our community who've been consulted. So, long answer to short question. Let's deal with that in the item. So that's Co a yes then. Well, that's up to us. Okay, that's Councillor right. Simpson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, look, thank you, board members. Um, one of the one of the things that you've got in your local board plan um, is that one of your local board's key initiatives is to fund cowrie dieback awareness raising. Mm. How much money are you putting in your budget in the next <coughs> two? Well, it's certainly within the term that your uh, governor's for. How much money are you putting in your budget for that? Forty-eight thousand a year, I think. Is, and that pays for Christine Rose's role as a um, coordinator and um, she works with schools and as you heard from one of the presenters that she works with concessionaires and others to raise awareness around carry dieback so that's our contribution. Correct. Great. Um, and additionally we also, um, we also hold a regular event which is the board's flag flagship event called the Kauri Carnival. It's happening in a couple of weeks on Earth Day be lovely if you came along. The primary goal of that is to grow the conservation community and awareness um, of Kauri Dieback, um, have a great family fun day, celebrate Kauri while learning more and hopefully garnering more support. And this year is shaping up to be really great. We're going to have um, going to have cleaning stations on display, all sorts of groups that are working within the ranges, lots and lots of different experts, hopefully a panel with experts, question and answers on Kauri Dieback. And that's really aimed at, at a sort of multi-generational approach to, to really reach into the community as well as give kids some fun things to do. So thanks for that. So it was 48 plus this event. 25,000. Wow. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the biggest event that we hold right, as a local board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. I think it's fair to acknowledge the Waitakere Rangers local board for their huge contribution yeah. in this area, not given that it's a regional a park. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Um, Councillor Darby and <coughs> Councillor Casey, and then we'll move on to the item. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Greg and team. Oh, um, and look, there was a suggestion earlier, and I forget the name of the speaker, and my apologies to that speaker, that uh, just questioned that there were some community meetings that the board were not present at. And I'm, can you just, are you, were you invited to those meetings? Clearly they weren't organised by you, otherwise you would have been there. Uh, but just can you give us a sense of how the board has informed its decision uh, based on community inputs and how it has made it itself as accessible to those inputs and maybe refer to those particular meetings? Sure. Okay, uh, so basically parks came along to us and told us what they were doing um, when it was all fairly set in place in terms of you passed a resolution in February that said there would be engagement with affected communities. So what they planned was a survey. Um, we didn't think that was adequate. Our communities that are affected by this usually like a public meeting. Um, Parks responded to that by putting in a drop-in session at Arataki Visitor Centre in the middle of the day. I personally complained again, again about that and then at very short notice, like I think, 
48 hours at the most, an evening meeting was organised at Arataki once again, um, which none of the board members could get to. Uh, I just wanted, so that, that was, I, I think it was fair, very light in terms of what I would have expected from that resolution that you passed in February. Um, but I just wanted to, last night there was a meeting of all the, um, all the ratepayer groups in the area who do that regularly, and they passed a resolution. So there were eight groups there representing Henderson Valley, South Chitterangi, Chitterangi Piha, Hui Akum Wallace, Waitaki Rangers Protection Society, um, Lang Home. And I'll just read out the words um, that, that, so they passed, that we support the Waitaki Rangers Local Board's stance to require complete closure of the entire forested area of the regional park and then develop a plan for the future use of the Waitakeries followed by controlled openings of tracks that meet the standard as a series of rolling openings. Um, and also they're aware of the fact that we are trying to get information and advice on the closure of local par parks or tracks or keeping them open or work that needs done and, and we kind of like thought it might come through with this report but it hasn't. Um, so we're still looking at that. You will also notice in terms of what our local communities think that in the write-up of the survey work that was done by the council that substantially more people, I've, I've forgotten the words, but it's something like substantially more people in the Waitaki Rangers local board area thought that more closures should take place. So you had these three groups. One, op, um, option A is a good option. You had other people that were 43% who were opposed to, uh, thought that went too far. But it was interesting, and there were others that wanted it to go further. And the statement is made in that report that that was very much supported by the people from our local board area. And if I just might add to that as well, um, it's certainly not the case with community that I've engaged with that there's an immediate um, embracing of them not being allowed in the park. It's something that comes with time and it's something that comes with a bit of consideration it's a huge inconvenience to all of us, especially if we live there, because we live there because we love it and we want to be in there. And we, you know, and one community member said to me that it's like church. It's going in there. It is a very, very spiritual place. So um, it takes a while for people to come around, but if they're given the information and they're given the chance to come around, then they will. They generally do care enough to actually suffer the inconvenience. So. Um, also, part of the um, Te Durangi Festival, we had a, um, an expert panel at the library. We had about 70 members of the community there. Um, went over time. There was standing room only. Um, we had to get kicked out at the end. People were so interested. Um, and so people are just really, really hungry for more information. So that's another, sorry, that's, a, that's another um, item of, of um, community awareness raising that we funded. Um, so... Um, yeah, the council needs to reach out, I think, a lot better to the community. And um, in terms of those, the, proposed, the proposals of the track closures, we don't believe that the Waitaki Rangers local board was worked with um, at an adequate level that would have re reflected the recommendations made by your committee in February. Um, we were told um, nearly minutes or half an hour before the survey and the proposal of which which tracks would be opened or closed, <coughs> we were told what those uh, what those tracks were, and and told that there was no way we could influence what was actually going to be consulted on with the public. So, um, the Waitakere Rangers Local Board, in in its capacity as Auckland Council's official representative body of the community that lives there, needs to be part of this um, process a lot more. Okay. Um, Last question, Member Blair. Oh. Thank you, Local Board and Madam Chair. Um, so in December we had no closures and <laughs> and then there was a, a massive uh, movement amongst the people and then a lot of our staff worked hard to get some closures to the forest in February and we came to a decision, a very hard decision, to... Um, closed tracks and we, the staff worked really hard to get there so what we're, we're in a situation where now we've got 
you want more tracks closed or to take time instead of a first May 1st deadline and to consider more track closures, do the research, do the education, do the information to have a proper plan implemented. Is that kind of where the current mm. reality is? So yeah. the Can I just comment on that? Because I don't think that... Chris? Pardon? Because we're in a bit of yep. a situation where council staff have really worked sure. hard to get us to here, and um, and now we're asking them to slow down a bit. No, our, our position is closure of the ranges, uh, and with the coastal tracks without carry remaining open, and service roads being open. But let's be clear and consistent that we close the ranges down, and then start to put the strategy in place and then work back about rolling opening of um, tracks but, uh, and, and trails. But going forward with the suggested track openings has presented in option A, uh, we think that's premature and we should have a closure under those recommendations as we've put before you and then from there start the rolling opening. So we your opinion would be 1st of May is too mm. early to close then, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, no, we, we would say close by, we, we, would, we would want to see the ranges close by the 1st of May. Conceptually, um, place is closed, sorry everyone, but we're going to start opening these tracks and we'll let you know as they're open. Yeah. Can I just say that these, like when they came to talk to us, the parks people, they said that they had made these decisions purely looking through a carry dieback lens, and they can confirm that when they talk to you. Our view is there's a whole lot of other things that need to be taken into account if you're not going to get some very peculiar and disastrous unintended consequences. Like, if you reduce the track network, if you have fewer tracks people can go on, you're going to get many, many more people on the fewer tracks and it will profoundly change the Waitakere Ranges which is being kept kind of rough and ready because that's what people have wanted. They wanted the challenging tracks and the tramping tracks. If you start upgrading them all and boardwalking and that's going to be a very different Waitakere Ranges and that needs to be thought through Absolutely. not just ad hocly sliding into it. You need to know what the consequences of closing particular tracks will be. We've got tracks already, like Kitty Kitty Fall tracks, we keep on coming back to that, and the reason is they get 12 to 1,500 people a day on that track. Now, if you close a whole lot of other track, are we going to get 2,000, 3,000 people on that track? And what does that mean for the track, the environment, but also for the visitor experience? So that's what we're asking. We're asking for a plan that looks at the tikanga, that looks at the environmental impacts, that looks on the people impacts, rather than just kind of thinking we can do it as business as usual and just with a few security guards. Okay, last question, Councillor Clo, and then we're going to take a 20 minute break. Councillor Clo. Greg, Greg in, in February, sorry, unless my memory's um, slipping, but we ended up effectively endorsing your local board's proposal. What has changed in three months? Uh, I believe our position is still fundamentally the same as it was back then. It was uh, the, the proposal back then was close the forest, uh, leave the service roads open, uh, look at the coastal roads where there aren't carry, they can be opened, and then work through a process and deal with everything else. And option um, A tries to get there, but it's just jumping too quickly in terms of opening tracks, we believe. So we, we think that you need to just take a bit more time to work on that list and have a proper process before those tracks are opened. If I might, it's really just, it's, a, it's about having a, sending a clear message to the public, because actually it doesn't matter how good our policy is, how much funding there is to implement it, and all of that, if the public does not know for certain that they actually the forest of the Waitakere's is off limits for now, so don't get in your car, don't drive out there, don't expect to be able to use it. Um, that's, that's a really key part of the public message and any kind of environmental management strategy, you need to be able to communicate it. 
Okay, that's a good point to round that out. I, I'm getting a little bit concerned now. We'll go, we, we will, because you haven't spoken yet, Councillor Hills. We are going to take a break because we are trying to be sensible and humane about these things. And then we've got the item proper. So just letting everyone know. And then there's the rest of the agenda. So that's why if I am trying to keep things going, we are trying to keep it going quickly. Very quick question, Councillor Hills, and hopefully very quick answer from one person. Um, no, so the last year decision um, was a decision that we backed up of your exact position. And I guess the logistics behind it is what have you seen change from that point to now? So the, the, I feel like we followed the right, you last year followed in February, but now it seems, I mean, logistically, I just don't know what's changed since, well, how do we? December, our position was close all high and medium risk tracks. Yep. And the resolution talked about high and medium risk tracks, but they had a whole lot of exceptions. Okay. And then February, it was close the forest and work, work on reopening areas that are dang that can be reopened but but the proposal today is close the forest but there's 44 tracks that are still going to be open okay so we, we just believe fundamentally that the, the two ideas don't gel together properly and that's why there's confusion thank you yep. indeed i'd like to move that we thank the um waitakere rangers local board councillor cooper will second all those in favor please say aye, aye. against Carried. Thank you very much. Thanks to the local board for your clarity on this. Um, we'll just quickly deal with the next two items. There's no um, no extraordinary business, no notices of motion. So we'll adjourn for 20 minutes. I'll move that. And Seconded. Seconded. Deputy Mayor. All those in favour, please say aye. Okay. Against. Carried. Aye. And we'll come Three back together. in 11.37 past 20. So we'll come back. Thank you.